This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so welcome all participants. I think some of the participants are still joining. So uh, in the in the meanwhile, uh, I will request uh, content to introduce all the all the speakers. And uh, after the introduction of the speakers, uh, we can start. So over to you, Kanchan. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. This is Nagar from Indomim Private Limited, Bangalore. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, I would request uh, every all participants to uh, write their uh, questions in the chat box, and we will answer all the questions in the chat box after the uh, after the presentation. So I would request everyone to write their questions in the chat box. Okay. Now, Kanchan, you can uh, you can introduce all speakers. Yes, sir. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. There are total three presenters for today's session. So I would like to request our today's first presenter, Mr. Prakash Patil. He is the head of application engineering. He has a total 20 years of industrial experience in various fields like production, quality, technical services, key account sales, and application engineering. He is working with Sen Goban Abrasive since 2005 and in application function for 10 plus years. His expertise in abrasive applications, products, auto bearings, and steel industry. Our second presenter for today's session is Mr. Hari Krishna. He is a manager of application engineering. He has a total, total 6.5 years of experience with Sen Goban Abrasives in Application Engineering. He has three plus years of experience in vibration analysis and condition monitoring. He is certified vibration analyst in ISO 184362 category two. He is expertise in material science, engine wall industry, digital system and tools, machine condition monitoring. So our third presenter, Mr. Satyam Gupta, he is a manager of OEM, electronics, market, and PGS. He has done MS in manufacturing management and BTEC in mechanical engineering. He, is, he has a total 11.5 years of industrial experience in key account sales and application engineering, technical services, research and development function. He is working with Sen Gobben Abrasive since 2010. And he is also certified vibration analyst in ISO 184362 category two. He is expertise in vibration analyst, grinding technologist, abrasive products and applications, auto and bearing industries, photonics, ultra, ultrasonics, imaging and testing. So I am requesting Mr. Prakash Patil to continue this session. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, Kanchan. Uh, I hope uh, no, my voice is clear and uh, I am audible. Uh, sure. Can you confirm me once? Slide yeah, yeah. is visible, yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah, you are audible. Your slide is visible. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank you all, first of all, no, uh, by taking out uh, time from your busy schedule uh, to join this webinar. Uh, and this is the first of its kind webinar organized by you know average manufacturer uh, for the industry because we serve to the lot of industries and all. So uh, let's start with you no know, the presentation part and uh, just I will start with the agenda first. So what is the today's agenda for next one hour and one and a half hour? We will be sharing with you our experience, what we did, uh, what kind of competencies we have, what kind of service we can offer. So we'll start with the uh, Sen Goben overview and then we're we'll talking about the, what are the performance grinding solution services. Uh, then uh, Hare Krishna will take you through the basic explorations of uh, vibration analysis reports and uh, some of the case studies. And we'll also talk about what are the other services we offer to our customers. And at the end, uh, we will have a question and answer session. So uh, as uh, mentioned by Nagesh, uh, you can put your questions 
in the chat box and we will address this question so at the end of session okay so uh, let's let's start with uh, saint goben overview uh, just so i think uh, the people who have joined initially they would have seen the video uh, so i am not going to play it again because uh, anyway we already most of the people would have seen it it is available so so what is the saint goben what do we do what is our purpose uh, no uh, so actually uh, we we are now our the purpose is uh, making the world a better home with our all surface no uh, solutions uh, what we provide to our customers and various industries and all so to start with uh, who we are uh, so saint goban uh, maybe most of you may be aware of the glass brand where you know we would have used some glass uh, maybe the automotive glass or maybe faucet or maybe some construction glass and all but we are also present in you know, various uh, products and applications and industries so this is one of the top 100 uh, no uh, what, uh, global industry saint goban is known for their innovations and all we are present in 72 countries and uh, we have no more than 170000 employees uh, worldwide and this is a 350 year old company so this is no uh, the kind of legacy brand we have uh, and we are proud of that so coming to the next slide uh, so what we do in terms of r&d and innovation so we have total uh, eight cross business r&d centers and out of which one of the r&d centers we have in uh, saint goben sri that we call as a saint goben research india that is in chennai uh, which is in uh, iit madras uh, campus uh, this is one of the largest you know, r&d center what we have where we do a cross functional or cross business you know, r&d centers uh, we have you know almost more than 3600 researchers uh, worldwide and uh, we file almost 400 patents every year you know considering all our business together uh, coming to the india part uh, how we are placed so now i am talking about specific to the average use that is a grand river northern limited so uh, we have a four plants means in bangalore we have multiple plants within the same uh, campus uh, but if you see the location wise so we have plant in mumbai bangalore nagpur and himachal where we manufacture all types of abrasives so we have four manufacturing facilities almost 100 plus employees uh, and uh, 120 million euro uh, is sales this is about the india saint goben we call as the grand river northern limited for the abrasive function is facing so so we serve uh, almost you can see uh, every country uh, across the globe everywhere we are there and our product is in a such, such a that you would have seen in the video almost for every application uh, there will be a use of abrasive so, so it is a very huge vast and also at the same time it is not so easy to understand also in terms of application part or the complexity of the grinding process the people who would have spent years together or their life entire life in the grinding process still they will say we are still learning so that kind of no The complex process is uh, if we talk about the grinding. So we serve almost all markets, uh, and we have uh, six type of businesses. We have we we are known for the different brands like a Saint Goben, Norton, Grandwell, Winter, Carborundum, USA, Flexovit. These are our brand names. And uh, if we talk about what are the what kind of products do we make or do we manufacture here in India or the globally? so there are uh, six types of business where we deal with the first business is we call as a bonded abrasives so where we make the wheels with so vitrified one systems or resin one systems or rubber one system or epoxy where you will have aluminum oxide or ceramic grains and these type of products generally we use in steel industry automotive or aerospace foundry bearing rail almost all precision as well as non precision application you will find the use of bonded abrasives the second part the super abrasive super abrasive means uh, whatever we make with cbn or diamond so those products we call as a super abrasive so you would have seen a lot of cbn grinding applications maybe uh, crank cam bearing uh, so uh, walls you know, cutting tools uh, there you would have seen a lot of no 
So super average products are being used. The third product category we call as a skin weeks. Uh, majorly, this product is being used for the in the fabrication industry, in foundries for the cutting or maybe polishing, covering, all these kind of applications. You will find these products. The fourth product is a coated abrasive. Uh, the coated abrasives generally uh, the coated means the abrasives will be coated on some base. The base may be the cloth base or paper base or polyester base. And uh, these products are generally used for the most of the places like a polishing, a deburring, or lapping, that to those kind of applications. And also you can see a lot of industries where you will find these products are being used. And the last two products uh, where we are present, like a construction products under the clipper brand, uh, where these products are used for the marble cutting or tiles cutting or maybe you can see some of the big cutters during the cement road, no uh, uh, cutting so that uh, lines cutting and all. So generally we use these products in uh, building constructions or maybe stones or maybe in, in uh, roads and all those things. And the last product where we deal with, we have a, this is like a polishing products where we use in uh, auto after industry or maybe with the OEM, where we have a lot of solutions in terms of polishing. Uh, for ceramic coating. So all these kind of products we supply to the automobile industry. Uh, and also we we have uh, Take Bond as this is a new brand or uh, a new company recently acquired, uh, which deal with a lot of you no know, adhesives as well as the sealants or the color sprays, that kind of products. So this is uh, the, the overall the product portfolio of what we have under the Sugobin umbrella uh, in India. So coming to uh, the PGS, uh, the part is the PGS, uh, what kind of services uh, we do offer and what are the contents, uh, what kind of competencies do we have? So uh, the PGS is a performance grinding solution. So uh, there is a wheel, there is a dresser, there is a machine, there is a coolant, there is a lot of things. But what, is there a sufficient, no, do you have a sufficient in-depth knowledge, whether you understand your process in depth? Whether you know what is happening inside the grinding, can you able to see it? So all these visualization part we bring to the customer with the help of our PGS performance grinding solution. Uh, uh, sorry, this is a disturbance. Uh, can you keep yourself on mute, please? Or uh, maybe Kanchan, you can keep uh, mute the people. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Sorry. So, so what kind of you no know, services we offer to our customers or the industry? We have uh, multiple services available. Uh, so, the first part is the training where we have a customized training uh, to the customers as per their product requirement. For example, bearing, steel, or at home. Uh, or what kind of training do they want, whether they want a level one, level two, level three, uh, whether they want to uh, understand in depth about the vibrations, whether they want to design the grinding cycle, whether they want to optimize the cycle, troubleshooting. So all these things uh, we cover in a training and we also ready made vouchers for that. The second part is the uh, vibrations and condition monitoring. So uh, I think you would have seen a lot of service providers in the industry. Uh, but uh, what is no uh, USP what we have because we are there uh, we are in this field and you can see our history and our strength uh, we know the grinding uh, very well as compared to any of the service provider so the other service provider they will just tell you whether the vibrations are within the tolerance or out of tolerance and all but we are the one who can tell you where is the, exactly the problem from where it is coming how, what are the solutions you know you can implement what and we have the you will we'll share details once you go through the presentations uh, we also work uh, for the I, uh, iot based no uh, process monitoring systems uh, i think you would have seen uh, some of the customers or some of you already you may be having the uh, iot based no oe monitoring systems uh, remote monitoring system for your shop floor and all so we also have a Norton foresight uh, where we have a lot of features other than just OE, where you will have a cycle analyzer. You can compare the cycle you know, from any date, any time. You can also 
design in a such a way that whether I can run my process as compared to the ideal cycle or not. You can have a remote access, you can get a remote you no know, uh, alerts and all those things. So that's comes under yes. normal foresight. And and the last part is this grinding cycle of process optimization. As I said, uh, it is very difficult to see or understand what is happening you know, inside the machine because once you close the door, the, the a lot of coolant will be flashing and you will not be able to see what is happening you know, inside the inside the process. So can I have something which with which I can visualize the process, uh, whether whether my grinding wheel is doing a proper job, if there are some any issues in terms of some plays. So I think those things uh, with our competencies and all gadgets, we can able to provide you a lot of inputs, which will help you ultimately to improve the productivity, you know, and also uh, it will also help you to have the preventive maintenance of your machine. So, so this is about the you know, Sangoban overview and the performance grinding solution services, what we can offer to the customer. So then the next part, uh, I will request uh, Hari Krishna. So Hari Krishna is our uh, CAT2 vibration analyst. He is certified by Mobius Australia. And uh, he has almost three years of experience in this field. So he will take you through the, uh, what are the different kinds of vibrations, the basics, why the vibrations are important and what GNO can offer. So maybe uh, Hari, uh, you can take a control. I request Kanchan, uh, please give control to the Hari. Yes, so I got the control and I'm sharing my screen. Hope it is visible. Uh, yeah, your screen is visible. Yes. So yeah, so good afternoon all and uh, thanks for your participation first of all. So to move into the main context of the webinar today. So we'll start with the vibration analysis topic where we will go through the basics of vibration and uh, what we have as a, a solution for you all. Okay. So as uh, Prakash was explaining in the previous slides, uh, he used the term saying grinding is complex. Okay, so you, we wanted to understand from our customers why they feel grinding as complex. Okay, so we had a, we have the couple of uh, open house sessions with various customers from all over India, and we wanted to we, we had a small survey. We wanted to understand what is their pain point in grinding. Okay, so this is the response we have got from uh, the, all the customers from all over India from different industries, be it an automobile, be it a bearing industry, or uh, be it a textile industry. Okay, wherever they use grinding and they felt these are the major challenges they face in each of their grinding operation. Okay, so if you see uh, the major percentage, the top five, which I have marked in red arrow here. So the most of the customers felt they had chatter on, on their grinding machines. And then the second top list, your burn marks. And the third one is your size variation. And fourth is your machine vibration. And fifth is your surface finish. Okay, so almost like... Uh, uh, 60 70 percent of the major faults which customer which our customers felt were in this five categories so we went into uh, uh, this, I mean, we went to a uh, uh, blank board and started, what, started to analyze what could be the reasons for this major challenges okay so one of the things apart from the other proper or the other variables like your wheel speed coolant and everything so we thought like one, one major factor which influences all these five conditions is your machine vibration Okay, so emission vibrations can lead to chatter on the job. It can cause surface finish issues on your job. It can it can have a bad impact on tool life. So suddenly you will be having a drop in tool life. It will lead to a high increase in consumable cost, or it can also result in uneven size variation on your bumper. So this was one area like we were lacking expertise in past, and we decided okay, we'll just, we will not understand the mission vibrations and let us offer us a solution to our customers in terms of addressing their major pain points okay so now we know machine vibration is one of the root causes for all these major fire, uh, pain points and we wanted to understand how do you track these machine conditions or machine vibrations so there comes the point so to analyze any machine uh, tool failure okay so there are different techniques which are available uh, globally to analyze the machine tool failure and these are the, this is the most common, uh, I mean, the pie chart tells you what is the most common tool which is used for machine tool failure analysis. Okay, so you can see vibration analysis is the most common uh, tool which is used for detecting machine tool failure. 
and once we narrowed it down to vibration analysis we wanted to understand what is the effectiveness of this vibration analysis in detecting the machine vibrations because there is no use in detecting a vibration once the machine tool has failed right so we want to understand how effective a vibration analysis can help in predicting predicting the vibration and moving towards the preventive maintenance rather than a reactive maintenance so that's when uh, we went into details we uh, we wanted to understand how vibration can help in detecting the vibration uh, machine faults and at what stage so if you see any machine tool failure once it is initiated uh, vibration analysis is the first tool which will help you in detecting the fault at the very beginning stage before it propagates into your noise or your mechanical looseness to a catastrophic failure so a vibration analysis can detect any failure at the start of the failure its initiation itself so since you are able to detect it at the very early stages you can plan your maintenance maintenance activities in a way that you can prevent the breakdowns you can always you can also plan for predictive maintenance based on the trends you have and you can very well be assured that you can have a preventive maintenance rather than going towards a reactive maintenance where you are reacting to the machine breakdown after the machine has broken down okay and this is a, a clear cut benefit which uh, the survey results are coming out to be where you have with the predictive maintenance or your preventive maintenance you are saving a huge amount of cost uh, to uh, you to your respective organization rather than having a reactive maintenance because once the machine tool has failed you are losing time so in every industry time is money like the more the more the time you have the more conference you can produce and more we can sell and service our own customers so to prevent the downtime uh, you need to plan your predictive maintenance activities and preventive maintenance activities very carefully and uh, in terms of vibrations so your vibration analysis will short short give you with with once properly done with a proper uh, frequency we will be able to detect the vibration just before it goes into a catastrophic failure okay so this is the back basic background of how we feed a vibration analysis a service to our customers and to start with uh, so before we go into the case studies on our different futures we have in the, within the vibration analysis we'll just briefly touch upon very a very short introduction to the vibration so that we, we are on the same line when we go into the case studies or when we go into the uh, solutions we offer so how do you think a vibration occur so basically uh, the dictionary defines vibration as when there is a body with mass and velocity it moves in a periodic motion okay the periodic motion can be a spring say a spring is vibrating from top to bottom bottom to top and top to bottom so this is also a periodic motion and we we call it as vibration and it can also be in a circular body which is rotating around its own center this is also a periodic motion because it keeps moving into the same path again and again now uh, so what are the cause if you see the, what are the causes of this uh, i mean what is the effect of this vibration so basically uh, in a linear linear system say a spring mass system so any vibrations this is this is resultant of the force which is acting on it okay similarly for any rotating system because of the unbalance or because of the different fault conditions whatever vibrations that are getting generated okay for example a typical uh, cause of vibration is unbalance so what we call as unbalance the, the shift in center of gravity of the rotating mass from its center so basically nothing but how uniformly the mass is spread with, throughout the wheel when there is a ununiform distribution of mass and and to make it simple every every circular body or every metallic object or every composite will have its own unbalance so there is no perfect uh, element which is perfectly balanced the degree of unbalance will depend on the vibration severity okay so every unbalanced mass will produce its own forces onto the object and uh, that's just going back some years through our mechanical engineering background so we see like any rotating body will have its own centrifugal centrifugal force on its periphery right so this centrifugal force is basically dependent on mr omega square where m is your mass of unbalance so i am well let us not go too much into technical but the one important thing to understand is any forces which is coming out of unbalance is square of proportional to the square of the revol I mean, square of the velocity okay so an mr omega square where omega is your angular the velocity and it is proportional to the square of velocity so as you go on increasing the speed say now it is rotating at 10 rpm and there is the unbalanced force say 5 newton and you are increasing it to say 100 rpm you are increasing 10 times so the unbalanced force the unbalanced mass will create a force that is 100 times the initial force so it is going to be square of the is going to be proportional to the square of the rotating velocity and if you if you look into the grinding field so as the industry has progressed on its own years 
uh, people have realized like um, grinding at very high speeds uh, moving towards a so moving towards a high speed machining gives them benefit in terms of uh, i think there is some disturbance i request everyone to please keep on mute and if there's any question you can post it in the chat box yeah so to move into the i mean to continue with the topic so any the industry as you see in the grinding it's all moving towards high speed machining because people have started realizing that with high speeds you are able to achieve better uh, tolerances on the path they are able to optimize their tool life they are able to remove material at a very high rate, rates improving their productivity and everything so as as the industry progresses towards high speed machining the role of vibrations or the effect of uh, vibrations are being amplified through a square of it so it is very much important to understand how the vibrations occur what are the causes of vibration how do we control it okay so these forces are the one that is going to cause your uh, uh, lobing onto your job is generally we call it as chatter okay so now we are going through like what is the importance i mean uh, what is the effect of vibration now you want to quantify it somehow right so how do you quantify any vibration so basically if you see if you take an example of a simple uh, a simple system say a simple motor which is coupled to a say it can be a grinding spindle it can be a pump it can be a mo another motor or a driver with power it can be so any any system any rotating member will generate its own frequency based on the degree of imbalance okay degree of uh, vibration causing elements so basically that is a device that is going to pick up all your signals in terms of your wave so to make it very simple i will just show you a linear motion because we are all accust accustomed to use I mean, seeing a spring mass system so if i use a spring mass system say i am displacing it to by a certain amount so it is going to vibrate at this mean position which is zero at a certain frequency a certain speed or velocity okay if i trace okay. this path if i trace this path on a linear scale on time i am going to get a sinusoidal wave because it is going up coming down and again going up to the mean position right we call it as one cycle so initially from zero it is going up now it is coming down again it is going coming back to zero so this is called the one cycle of vibration and we represent it in a sinusoidal wave okay so so how do you define the magnitude of this vibration so now you have a sinusoidal wave so and there is a vibrating body how do you how do we how do i come out like okay this is the level of severity of the vibration so there are three different parameters so one is your displacement displacement is very simple how much the body is vibrating to one pro for its mean position so here this vibrating from minus 1 to plus 1 so displacement is totally 2 2 units okay so as simple as that so in this graph it will be the peak to peak displacement what is the distance between the this peak and a top peak and the bottom peak and there are other terms like velocity and acceleration basically what it uh, the literal meaning velocity being the rate of change of displacement how fast the displacement changes or how fast the body, body vibrates the acceleration is how fast the velocity changes so these are different terms uh, which we use to categorize the severity of uh, vibration again so which one to use where it again depends on the application the rotating frequency and everything but as of now let us keep in mind like these are the three terms which we use for uh, i mean analyzing severity of any vibrating member okay now so this is looking very simple right so you have a simple sine wave you just uh, if you record the simple sine wave from this instrument you will be able to see what is the peak what is the time period what is the frequency so here frequency is something per second what is the number of cycles right what is the number of cycles per second if i take here if i say to complete one cycle for the spring to go from mean position to top and then come to bottom and then come to mean position i take one second my frequency is one okay because in one seconds it is completing one cycle so similarly in a rotating member it is equal to the rpm of the rotating member so if the if the member rotates such so say 30 rpm you will have 30 cycles per second because every rotation will generate its own uh, vibration okay so this is this are two terms which will be need to be aware of one is your frequency and one is your time period so that we'll understand in better okay now coming back to the point this understanding this three terms in a simple sinusoidal wave is very simple because you have a you generally you generate this graph you see what is the severity what is the displacement and go about it but in reality if you see all this thing, it is not very simple to get a signal from a single sine wave signal from any machine any vibrating body because any machinery if you take are quite complex i have put a basic very old conventional cylindrical grinder you can see the rotating number of rotating members here you have a rotating motor you have a belt pulley system which will have its own imbalance and generate vibrations 
you have a stock which is rotating you have a grinding wheel which is rotating and you have a wheel head and its own driven by again a separate motor which is again rotating there are multiple rotating members within a single machine as you say and all these vibrations are mechanically transmitted for example a vibration which is happening in this uh, work spindle motor will transmit to your grinding wheel also though there is that go through the mechanical path which is your wheel body i mean the machine body and the base plane okay so whenever you are trying to capture vibration from any one of this uh, uh, machinery parts there always been influence from the other machinery parts which is going to complicate your signals okay so the, to make it very simple there is a small video explaining how this is going to affect your signal which is being generated okay let me play it if you put the vibration sensor on the foundation you can measure the overall value like this 6.3 millimeters per second but you are not able to distinguish which motor is causing most of the measured vibration then you can look at the signal in time wave form you will see this the signal is composed from two separate vibrations so this is the difference between the simple uh, sine wave which we saw in the last take this slide and to the to a more complex uh, signal i would say because there are two vibrating bodies and you are both the vibrations are getting transferred to the base plane so when you have two vibrating bodies you can see how complex the signal becomes so we would need to decompose it into uh, two different sources and i have to diagnose the problem accordingly vibrations from each motor you are probably not able to identify the source of the vibration either. Finally, you choose the spectrum view on a measured signal. So the signal will be decomposed into discrete frequencies. And shown to you from this view. From this point of view, you can easily say that the motor with the speed of 40 hertz is causing the problem. So this is one of the frequent queries which we get from many customers, saying, "How do you know which which is which uh, which of the machine part is causing the vibration?" Okay, that is why this process of spectrum analysis we call it as a fast Fourier transform operation. So this spectrum view will tell you which is the source of vibration. You can see there are two sources of vibration because in the in the example there are two motors on the base plate and you can see one of the motors which is rotating at 40 hertz frequency is generating more vibration than the other motor which is rotating at 50 hertz frequency so this is how the basic fft works uh, the software will turn this resultant signal into two different sources say a red curve and a blue curve and will change it into your frequency time domain so let us not go into depth on what is this happening but with this uh, picture we'll be able to see what is the source of vibration and what is the severity of vibration in each source Okay. So with this uh, view, we'll be able to be say with certain what what uh, part in your machine is vibrating and at what severity. Okay, now we are seeing uh, this is a simple uh, spectrum for a two motor which is vibrating at a certain frequency. Now, if we take an example of a grinding machine, say a grinding machine will have a motor which is rotating your grinding spindle through your belt pulley system, and your belt pulley system will also have its own vibrations because of the looseness on the tension of the belt and you have certain uh, unbalance in your grinding wheel which is causing a vibration again and you have certain unbalance in your dressing system which is again causing a vibration and your motor will also have certain you know, fault frequencies certain fault conditions that will cause your vibration so if you see this so when i measure the signal when i measure the vibration signal at any condition say i'm measuring at the wheel spindle i am going to get this signal right so this is the measured signal uh, from a wheel spindle so i know i will not be able to understand what 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 is causing all this vibration because it is a very complex signal so the our software will convert it into the spectrum view where you will be able to segregate the different source of vibration say say there is the peak 1200 so i will go and see what is the what is which of the machine part is running at 1200 rpm so here it is most likely to be a grinding wheel okay okay now i know this is my grinding wheel uh, frequency and i can tell you what is the vrt of the vibration based on y-axis scale Okay. Similarly, you can distinguish the different sources of vibration in this spectral view. Say this one is your grinding wheel, this is a motor, and this is uh, your three is your vibration from your belt pulley system, four is your vibration from dressing system, and two is your vibration from the 
uh, smaller pulley, which is attached to the motor. Okay, so this is how we'll be able to identify which of your machine part is vibrating more and at what frequency. Okay, so this is in nutshell how the service is going to help you in uh, finding out which of your machine machine parts is creating your uh, vibrations on your machine. Now, so we can categorize. Okay, now we have we have told you how the software works. Now there are basically if you see. We call it as big four faults. There are four major fault conditions which we see in any grinding machine, or be it any machinery for that matter. So the first one we call it as unbalance. So basically, if you see here, say an example of a rotating fan, a rotating spindle, you can you can take an example of a rotating spindle also, and you see there is an unbalanced mass on any one of the on any one of the blades. Okay, so this is this is called an unbalanced condition. And the second kind, the second major fault will be your misalignment. Say you have a coupling, a direct coupling between your motor and the pump. Okay, it this is okay. When the smiley is good, it means that the coupling is good. And when there is misalignment, we call it as a, a, a misal, I mean, a misalignment condition. But it is going to generate its own vibration because of the misalignment. It can be in the angular direction, or it can be in the vertical, or it can be in the horizontal direction also. Okay, and you have a rotating looseness. So this is where any rotating member which is going to be rotating loosely because of the structural gap or it is because of the structural looseness. Okay, where is going any rotating member will have its own, uh, I mean, more degrees of freedom and it is going to vibrate within this available space. Okay, and then you have bearing failure. So, this is four major categories of failures which we see in any machinery. Uh, we call it a big four faults. And if you want, if someone would be asking what is the most severe in all these four, so there is one small survey again conducted by the team. If you see uh, the most major cause of your vibration is your bearing failure and misalignment and your unbalance and looseness. Whereas there are certain other conditions also which is contributing to your uh, lesser condition, I mean uh, lesser percentage to the vibration. So if you are able to diagnose this four faults, if you are able to predict this four faults before it occurs, then you will be having a better chance of moving towards a preventive maintenance or a predictive maintenance uh, solution rather than the reactive maintenance category. So that's where the vibration analysis helps in to predict all these four faults before it becomes very severe. Okay. So, so how how GNO or how the Norton team can help you with these services? So, with the with the knowledge of grinding and the grinding wheel machines, we'll be having what we'll be understanding what kind of forces are being developed in the grinding system, which which aspect of the grinding machine will generate more forces and, and its impact on your job. And we have we do have we know like how complex the machineries are nowadays so you will not be even able to open your uh, you keep your machines panel open and take readings because you want to have the machine panel closed uh, to take um, to even start the machine so that's where the wireless technology comes in place uh, this, we, this is based on your uh, wi-fi signals where you have wireless uh, uh, accelerometer and the signals are being transmitted to your ipad and we give a detailed report with all these conditions like we'll be able to give you what is the overall machine condition as per iso standards so iso 10816-3 is your uh, standard for vibration severity then we measure it on a rotating member uh, on a rotating body okay so we'll be able to give you the overall machine condition as per iso we can detect the fault frequencies and diagnosis such as diagnosis solutions for it we can tell you which aspect, I mean, which part is being uh, being to be faulty, and we can tell you the suggestions to rectify the same. And we can give you a spectrum analysis and time analysis, as we saw in the earlier slides. We can also trend the vibration. So this is very very important factor. So your ISO gives you certain limits, but it is very much necessary to understand how frequently or how often the machinery fails. So that's where with the frequent periodic vibration monitoring, we will be able to trend the severity of your vibration levels of the machine. And with enough data, you can even forecast saying your, your machine is going to fail, say three months down the line. Okay, so that is where the data analysis comes in picture, and the software is very capable of doing the same. So with enough data, we'll be able to for even forecast and tell you your machine is your bearings are going to fail, say three months down the line. And if you are taking any maintenance activity, say we are giving a vibration report saying these are the fault conditions, you need to act on certain points. And the, what are the changes, uh, what are the maintenance activities you do on the machine? We'll be able to record it in the machine saying there is a maintenance activity done. And we'll be able to track the effectiveness of the maintenance operation, maintenance activity. Say today you are maintaining, you are doing a maintenance activity. Say you are changing the bearing. 
so when you go on the measuring periodically for every two months every three months and it's like six months almost down the line you are seeing the vibration levels going up again so we can see how what is the effect of like, what is the life period of the bearing and you can even uh, predict for the future failure so in a single uh, single vibration analysis report we will be able to see all this uh, six seven parameters which are showing here which will be explained in detail to, so that you can act upon your predictive and preventive maintenance strategies so this is again explained in a brief video So this was the uh, the amplitude analysis which I was talking about in the last slide. So we'll be able to tell you as per uh, against ISO standards. So how is your machine condition against the overall ISO standard, whether it is in the alert test whether it's a danger, or whether it's in the good grinding condition or good operating condition. So with our report, you will be also getting a, giving a recommendation saying if there is any fault condition, what is the severity of the condition, and what is the action plan you need to take to ensure that the mission mission tool does not break down. So that summarizes overall the uh, vibration analysis services which we offer uh, to you and to just uh, quickly cover the different uh, hardware which you use so basically we use a, a wireless uh, accelerometer which you can see here is very easy to mount on your uh, machine spindles and take the vibration readings and the signals from this accelerometer is going to be received by an ipad which is going to give you a real-time uh, spectrum view of the vibration levels so many many fault conditions we will be able to give it to you on the spot and there are certain conditions which we need to be analyzed and give you the reports later okay and we also have a iot sensor so the industry again is moving towards industry 4.0 and the 24 uh, online monitoring with the help of internet and this is our iot sensor to measure your uh, vibration levels 24 by 7. so all this uh, wireless uh, accelerometer is for periodic measuring where we come into your shop floor and we measure the vibration levels of your machine, say every two months or every three months, depending on the uh, condition of the machine or depending on the criticality of the vibrations source. And this is going to record this the same vibration levels 24 by 7, and it's going to store the data into your cloud. Okay, so we'll be able to give you a real-time spectrum analysis. We'll be able to trend the data over a period of time. It is going to track the vibration severity in terms of your timeline. From the day it is mounted and from the day it is first measured to the day till its last time till the time the product fails okay and the, the one more good thing is we'll be also able to understand if you're doing a maintenance activity what is the effect of maintenance activity because we can try you can record the maintenance activity and you can say with certainty that this is the result of the maintenance activity because of which the vibration levels have come down and so we do have a certified team of uh, four individuals who uh, who have cleared the cat Category 2 in ISO 19436-2, uh, which is your standard for vibration analysis. So a certified uh, exam for vibration analysis, all the four team members here from uh, GNO, we have, uh, we have this CAT2 certification, and we are present in across the India.
so we have one member in each zone like north east west and south who can cater to the servicing needs from me okay, so these are different features we have so as i was saying we can have a single one time measurement and you can give a on spot report saying this is the vibration levels as per the iso standard you can also have root measurements like you can also have root measurements like uh, you can trend the uh, for example you can if you have say 10 machines you have 10 different uh, production lines and you have five machines in each line so you can also track the line wise vibration levels you can track the machine wise vibration levels you can track the cell wise vibration levels so all these uh, facilities are available in the software so that you can generate the report accordingly say you want to generate the report only for line one you can generate the report for line one or you want to generate the report for line five which is more critical maybe you are doing it for a customer with a better tolerances so you can generate the report for certain lines as per your need and this is always done this is all the data is available in the cloud so you'll be able to post process trend you can record the maintenance activities whenever you need because all the data is stored onto the cloud there is no data loss uh, from the system okay so just to uh, quickly cover on the iot sensor so all this which i explaining in the last slide so this uh, these are the features is available with our offline sensor where we use a wireless accelerometer to record all your vibration levels periodically it can be one time activity it can be a three months activity it can be an annual contract saying uh, say three to three, three times a year or a four times a year so all these places will be using this uh, wireless accelerometer and come and record the vibration signals whereas this 24 by 7 vibration analysis your iot sensor will help you to generate all this uh, signals like every i mean every uh, 25 i mean it generates a vibration report every 30 minutes so this is going to record the signals for every i mean for each and every second for 24 by 7 throughout the week but if there is any fault condition if there is any abnormal vibration is going to generate a report then and there and is going to give you an alert over mail saying the machine vibrations are going towards a higher level so that is where IoT helps in. Uh, so before you, you need not be at the machine shop floor. You can be at your cabin and you can, if there is any abnormality in your machine, you'll be able to get automated emails from the device to your laptop saying there is something which is going on with the machine. Right? So the, the working is very simple. There is a uh, sensor which is going to send the data to the cloud. And cloud, you'll be having a customized dashboard which is like this. So with the customized dashboard, you can see what is the instantaneous parameters at the current condition what is the acceleration level what is the displacement level how to you can also measure your temperature and audio whether there is any whether there is a rising temperature on the system whether there is an abnormal noise which is being generated on the system okay so with this iot sensor you will be able to so you will be uh, able to have improved productivity and reduce maintenance schedule because you have a continuous data so you'll be very easier to trend any changes in the system you can have a uh, close loop control saying you can integrate it with the other uh, iot devices in the factory from the response which are getting to from this signal okay and this also has a, a very attractive led signal say even your operator uh, can understand from the light so if the machine conditions are normal this is going to glow in green color if there is any abnormal vibration it is going to turn into a red color all these four lights will turn to red color so even at the operator level they will be understanding okay there is some abnormal vibrations in the system which we need to act on it and obviously, you are going to have a 24 percent monitoring with the help of this IoT sensor. Okay, so that's all with the hardware part. So just uh, so we have explained like uh, what are the fault conditions, how we are going to measure it, and how the software is going to help us identify the source of vibration. So to understand it more better, we have some certain case studies from our experience so far. So as I was telling you earlier, so these are the big four faults which we see in the industry and it is very much applicable to your grinding industry also. So we are going to see case study on each, I mean, one case study from each of these faults so that that's a better understanding to all of us saying what can be analyzed with this, right? So we'll start with unbalance. Okay, so this is again a, a case where we have a plunge cylindrical grinding machine which is rotating at a certain RPM, say 1250, and this is a precision grinding machine and it is rated at a 45 kilowatt, okay? The problem which the customer was facing was they are facing uneven size variation and they are leading to a higher number of reworks on the job because of the size variation. Okay. And even with the auto balancer showed that the system was properly balanced, but still they are going getting uneven size variation. So this is the spectrum. This is the kind of spectral graph which you will get in terms of an imbalanced condition. So 
you will be having a strong dominating 1x pick. So 1x is something which is very closely, which is equal to your rotating RPM. So if you are rotating a 1220 RPM, your 1x will be a 1220 RPM. So from this, you'll be able to understand what is the severity because of the running running body. Okay. So here we went in and mounted our sensors. So this is these are our uh, accelerometers which we saw in the earlier slide. So we can measure in both the directions at the same time. Uh, horizontal and all the both the radial directions at the same time. And when we measured it and took the signals. Okay. So this is the spectrum which we generated. If you're just going back to the last uh, view, you can see the reference spectrum when we have an in case of an imbalance. You can see the the measured spectrum. This is the actual spectrum which is being measured by the accelerometer. You can see a dominant peak which is very much the same as the reference spectrum. So that confirms that there is an imbalance in the system. Though the auto balancer showed that the system is properly balanced, but our vibration analysis sensor uh, predicted that there is a imbalance in the system. But so when we went into the analysis, so now we know there is imbalance in the system. So now, you, but your auto balancer shows that it's properly balanced. So we checked in what is the possible causes and we saw that the auto balancer was very faulty. It was not actually balancing the spindle. So the, we, we proposed the maintenance team to work on the auto balancer sensor and they correct, I mean, they worked on it and reduce, I mean, they, correct, they took the corrective action. So as a result of the corrective action, you can see uh, the vibration level. Which is, so initially this was the same peak which is being shown in red here. And after the maintenance activity, you can see the blue peak, which has come down to a very Plus level, so it is reduced by almost five to six times. So, as a result of which, there is a reduced rework and improved productivity on the machine. So, it has it has been allowed to continue for a longer period of time. It can also lead to breakdown. So we are able to diagnose it very quickly on the spot, and we have come out of this unbalanced condition and moving towards a better productivity on the machine by reducing the number of reworks. Okay, so this was a case of unbalance. So moving into the second uh, four, I mean, after the big four falls, we have seen the unbalance. And the moving to the second one is your misalignment. So misalignment, as I was saying, whenever there is a coupling, whenever there are two shafts are getting coupled together with a direct coupling, with a flexible coupling, or be it uh, any coupling for that matter, it has to be perfectly aligned to each other in all the axes. There is no misalignment. I mean, there is no there is mismatch in the alignment because it is misalignment. And this is one of the case where a customer is using a double disc grinding machine. Which is running at again say 700 rpm with a 35 kilowatt uh, motor and it's again a precision machine so why i insist on the category of machine is like based on the category whether it's a precision grinding or a rough grinding machine or ultra precision grinding machine there are certain levels of vibration which we had uh, developed over a period of experience saying this is allowable and this is permissible to run at a good condition so knowing what category of machine helps us in identifying the severity level and this impact on the quality job quality Okay, so coming to the case again, the case history was like, there are frequent part breakages on the machine. This is basically a very thin component. So because of its uh, very thin in nature, there are a lot of breakages, a lot of distortions which are happening on the part. And there's no definite pattern. So it is going to have, it was happening very randomly. And as a result of all these breakages and distortions, there is a high scrap percentage with the customer saying 6 to 7 percentage, which is very high for the customer. So they wanted to understand the effect of vibration in it. So the maintenance team checked the, all the other possibilities and they were not able to come out with a certain solution. And that's why we pitched in our vibration analysis services to understand what is the effect of vibration in this distortion or part breakages which we see. Okay, so we went in and mounted our uh, sensor, took the readings. So we saw this spectrum. So again, and going back, this is a reference spectrum for your any missile in case. You will have multiple harmonics against your one X. Say your, that is, your component is rotating, your spindle is rotating a 700 rpm, 727 rpm. You will have multiples of like 727 into 2, 727 into 3, 727 into 4. If you see peaks at all this harmonics, then it's a short, short case of misalignment with a 2x higher than 1x. So we'll not go into this, but this is a reference case for a misalignment case. So we saw certain very severe misalignment on the top wheel. So you'll have two different wheels. For double disc being, you have one wheel on the top, one wheel on the bottom. So we saw severe misalignment on the top. And during the course of analysis, we also found that both the wheels are rotating at different frequencies. Say your top wheel was rotating at the sound position RPM, your bottom wheel was rotating at 650 RPM. So that's a very high RPM difference between the top wheel and the bottom wheel, which is causing the slip between your top wheel and bottom wheel, which is going to cause your distortions. Okay. 
So this slip can cause uneven stress on the component and lead to distortion. Whereas a misalignment can again cause uneven forces onto the job and break the components. Okay. So we proposed that we as we suspected misalignment to the maintenance team and they took the corrective action on both the spindles on reducing the RPM difference and correcting the misalignment. So after the correction, we saw a very good reduction in the breakage. So the scrap percentage has come down from 6 to 7 percent to 2 to 3 percent. So because of this, the quality index of the customer gone up. They are able to rectify the, they are able to service their customers faster because of lower rejection of a scrap percentage. And their overall scrap cost has come down to a very good level. So this is one of the case where finding the misalignment problem has helped you help the customer in reducing the scrap percentage from 7% to a 2 to 3 percentage level. Okay, so this was the second case. And moving into the third case, we have a case of rotating looseness. So basically, again, uh, this is a side end grinding of a bearing roller, which is running at again 200 RPM, again, a precision machine at a 25 kilowatt uh, motor power. Here, the case was like there was frequent machine shutdown. So because of high vibration, the machine was shutting down very frequently. And even with the auto balancer, they were not able to reduce the vibration levels. So because of frequent machine shutdown, they have to turn and turn on the machine every time, booming, get it to a warmer stage and then start draining. So there was higher downtime on the machine. So we, we wanted to understand what is the root cause of this vibration. Again, we went in, uh, put our wax chromometer and took the signal. From the outcome, you can see a very similar spectrum to this. So this is a reference spectrum for rotating looseness, and you can see a very similar spectrum. It's uh, coming out of the analysis. So we saw the rotating looseness, which is found on the wheel spindle. And we also saw the vibration levels, which is like very high compared to your any precision grinding machine, above 4.5 mm per second, which is a very high value. Okay, so we proposed the uh, we proposed the same analysis to the maintenance team, and they started with the corrective action. So with the corrective action, they arrested the looseness in the system. So you can see the vibration level. So you can see a single peak, but the y-axis scale has changed. So now the vibration level is only 0.7 mm per second, whereas here you can see the y-axis scale it is up to 4.5 mm per second. So the vibration severity has come down. There is no rotating looseness. Like there is no harmonics like you see here. 2x, 3x, 4x, there is no harmonics here. It is only a single peak. And because of this uh, reduction in vibration level and uh, elimination of rotating looseness, the machine shutdown has stopped. Uh, they led to reduced machine downtime and proper functioning of the entire system. Okay. So these are the three major cases which we saw. The coming before going to the fourth case, which is your bearing failure, I just want to give you a basic of how a bearing fails. Okay, so any bearing which you buy from any company, be it uh, okay, be it any bearing manufacturer, you will have some time life called as Elton Life. So Elton Life is very simply is going to tell you the life of the bearings in terms of number of cycles at a specified load and the speed running condition with a 90% reliability. Okay, so that's what the Elton Life by definition is. And whenever a bearing fails, when you have a new bearing, okay, with the no defects. This it is expected to run up to its Elton life. Okay. But during the course of operation, your bearings, because of continuous rotation of uh, rolling elements, because of the forces between being carried by the bearings, it will start generating subsurface cracks. You can see there's nothing uh, visible on the surface, but you can see a small crack which is being generated on the subsurface. We call it a stage one bearing failure. Okay, you will not be able to see anything visibly on the surface, you will be able to see it only. When it propagates and comes onto the surface in stage two. So, this small minor crack will develop and come onto the surface with a small dent. We call it a stage two failure. And again, it is going to increase in intensity to a more visible uh, uh, fall condition on the bearing. We call it a stage three. And it again propagates to a multiple places. We call it a stage four bearing failure. Now, so where do you replace the bearing? So, we, uh, it is recommended you replace the bearing when you have a stage three condition. Right, to replace soon. So this is where we recommend many of the customers to replace the bearing. Though we can say stage four is where you have one percent of life remaining, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So it will always recommend the customer to replace the bearing at stage three. Now we need to detect the bearing failure, right? Because bearings are all inside the machine uh, bearing housing inside the machine parented dust bundle. So how will you be able to detect the bearing failure? Because you will not be able to see visually. Whether the crack has come, whether there is any dent on the bearing or anything. So that's why vibration analysis help you 
the vibration analysis can predict i mean that can detect the wearing failure from stage 2 so the vibration analysis cannot detect the wearing failure at stage 1 with our system which we have we'll be able to detect the bearing failure from stage 2 when it has 10% of the remaining life okay so when we detect the uh, failure at stage 2 we recommend the customer to look for availability of uh, the may arrange for spares and as and when the bearing failure reaches stage 3 we will be having a higher severity and that is the point we will be able to replace the bearing so that we we'll have all the planning activities done now again so because of this cracks okay so because of this cracks or because of uh, surface damage every rotation will generate this one signal so that is how the vibration sensor is going to pick up the shock waves which is being generated from the defects in the back okay so this is the overview of uh, how you can detect the barrier uh, faults you can detect it from the stage two now quickly covering on the case study again uh, od grinding operation outer diameter grinding with a single layer product the single layer product i many of us would know be saying it is not a it is not a uh, usable a grinding with a usable layer it will have only one layer of abrasive so it is very very susceptible to vibrations so if there is any vibra high vibration that is very fast that it is going to fail much faster okay so this was a case history the customer was found that in the last eight months of their usage they had a drop in wheel life by 50 percent so previously they were, they were producing say 1800 jobs per wheel so the the life has dropped down to 900 jobs for the last eight months so they tried various maintenance activities they changed the wheel they changed the wheel supplier everything but they were not able to come out of this issue they are always seeing a drop in wheel life so that's why we pitched in the vibration analysis we mounted our sensor we took the vibration signals and this is the spectrum we saw so this is the reference spectrum for any bearing failure this is the bearing inner race fault in the bearing you have outer race inner race and a rolling element so we can detect the fault in any of the rotating components we can detect the fault in outer race we can detect the fault in inner race or even your rotating elements so this was a case where the bearing inner race had the fault so we gave the a recommendation to the customer saying your bearing has failed uh, and there is higher vibration levels in the system so customer uh, changed the bearing condition uh, the maintenance in the bearing condition and immediately you can see a increase in wheel life so before maintenance i was saying there's a wheel life of 900 from 1800 you can just again increase back to 1600 and something in that range after the maintenance activity so this is a way like even a bearing failure can affect your tool die for the machine operation condition right so with the vibration analysis you will be able to identify the bearing what is the source of vibration and rectify it sooner so just to summarize on the key takeaways from vibration analysis so with the periodic monitoring uh, so with our service we'll be able to give you a periodic vibration monitoring and reliability at very economical cost and the advanced understanding of grinding machine which you have so in the introduction you would have known you would have seen saying there are 30 plus years of combined experience just from the speakers we have today so with the advanced knowledge in grinding machines how the abrasive will behave in the, under different conditions we'll be able to with certainty say because of this vibration you are going you are ending up in a different uh, quality requirement on the job or it can be a drop in life or whatever be the issue you are facing okay there is holistic solution in terms of abrasives in terms of tools and in terms of machine also now so previously we are present only on the abrasives now we'll be able to help you in terms of addressing your machine tool conditioning monitoring also and you have a single point contact for all your deals in terms of your uh, recommendation services or uh, periodic monitoring and you have a safe and secure data storage in terms of iot sensor we have a secure data storage in the cloud and you can also maintain uh, maintenance records in the cloud with the benchmark rate okay, this is the example of the maintenance activity you can see before vibration after the maintenance activity you are recording that there's a maintenance activity done in this period and after the maintenance activity we again come and check and see what is the CVIT, how the CVIT has dropped okay so that's it to summarize on the vibration analysis part so moving ahead i will request satyam uh, the control to be passed to satyam so Satyam will take you to just a quick introduction to the other services which you have in the PGS case. Yeah. Thanks, Hari. Thank you, Hari. Uh, oh, can you, uh, Satyam, you have got the control? Yeah. Yeah, I just got it now.
या योर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल करता ओके सो ओके सो यस या सो थैंक यू हरी फॉर Yeah. Right. Somebody was disturbing uh, actually. Yes. Hmm. Uh, we have one question. Uh, just in the start of the presentation, uh, it was said that there are three units of measurement of vibration: uh, mm, uh, then other one is mm per second, and the third one was mm per second square. So when are those taken into considerations? Does it depend on application to application, or what it is? Can you can you please put a light uh, on sir, that? Sir, we are. Uh, we are not down your question. We'll just answer it though, once we complete the presentation. Only three, four slides. We'll complete the presentation and we'll answer your question. We are noted it down. We'll answer your question again. Okay. 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 Thank you, Vadi. So in other services, uh, uh, basically, what we have the grinding process optimization, which is a very important uh, in terms of to understand the grinding process. As you all know, that the grinding is a very very critical process. which is very difficult to understand because it have a lot of variables so to understand them there is a process which is called field instrumentation system fis what it does it basically converts the load which you apply during grinding on the spindle and it convert into the digital signal that digital signal basically helps us to understand the grinding process as well as as you all know that the grinding process when the grinding happens what is actually happening when the wheel is interacting with the workpiece there is a microscopic interaction is happens where grain interact with the bond and the work and the chips so all those are interacting with each other and that actually overall affect the your surface integrity which you measure in terms of chatter finish and all those things okay so to understand those quality issues also this instrument really helpful to diagnose the problems so as you see here it is good to understand cycle time reduction troubleshooting the problems process optimization and new product evaluation as well as to compare the different grinding wheels if you want to understand which wheel is better as well as evaluating the grinding cycle and their optimization so a uh, field instrumentation system is a such a tool which we have and the main power is the software that software is really helpful in terms of signature understanding and its analysis so generally we equipped this uh, instrument in the high frequency drive or the at the output of the motor spindle where we got this electrical signal and which is converted into the signature so having said that uh, this is available uh, unit with us along with the powerful software which gives lot of understanding and uh, if you see the the cycle design of the grinding basically it is basically converted us into a signal where you can identify what is the value added time and what is the non value added time like in terms of slide motion in terms of when wheel is touching the component when the spark out is applying how much spark out is required to apply so all those optimizations we can do with the help of grinding cycle okay uh, there is a one very simple case study uh, we have here so it's a application of uh, shaft grinding where we are grinding the face as well as the od of the component so in the left hand side picture when you see what is happening here when the wheel touches the component immediate some sharp uh, peak is coming in the signal and then the grinding is happening so here is the comparison of two cycle uh, after dressing the first component and the dressing frequency is the five pieces so after every five pieces we do the dressing so we have taken the first piece and the sixth piece when we compare so after dressing even we saw there is a sharp peak is coming in the shoulder grinding when the wheel is touching the face immediately at that moment so what can be the possible reason to understand this issue one either your wheel is very hard in terms of when it touches the face it creates a sharp power or there is a some hitting is happening the uh, or maybe the offset is not good when wheel is approaching to the component so these are the possible causes how do you know these are the possible causes because 
you know the signature you have seen the signature analysis you have seen this digital signature based on that you are predicting or understanding these are the two main cause and what we have done we have solved this issue by changing the dressing feed rate making wheel little more open and coarser as well as setting the radius of the wheel profile as well as the touch point position and later on you can see what happened after changing the process the yellow curve earlier it was a red curve so we can't see there is a gradual we cannot we can see there is a gradual cutting is happening now on the face which is helping in terms of a better quality on the face as well as less burn marks on the component okay so this is really helpful case study in terms of solving the customer problems and quality problems uh, other than that the service what we have is called a training services and in training services basically uh, we have designed uh, these training modules uh, very very you know uh, have a vast experience of industry uh, we have a big team uh, who is basically have experienced uh, more than 15 20 years and uh, uh, we have you know compiled all the experience uh, in these trainings uh, as the example as the case studies and we have bifurcated our those learnings into modules so we have module level uh, basic training program and intermediate training program and advanced training program so what we are doing in basic training program uh, basically covering the basics and the safety module part and in the intermediate we are telling about you the what are the new products new technologies and especially super abrasive products coated abrasive products as well as the dressings and optimizations and in an advanced program which is really very good in terms of uh, the technologies which are coming and the advanced machines which are coming here like we will talk about here grinding theory more on chatter and the acoustic emissions uh, vibrations fis all what i have told coolant considerations how to optimize those things so it's a very very good in terms of highly technical advanced training program which is really helpful to optimize your productivity and the performance so yes definitely uh, who can attend yes uh, we have a module level wise so we can customize as per your requirement you can reach us whenever you need those training programs and as well as we are giving on site as well as virtual and definitely the saint gobain abrasives which is you know uh, in abrasives a very world number one company can give giving a certificate on these training programs also so uh, that's all from the training side and uh, um, i think uh, in the pgs team has already prakash has explained well that we have a big team here and uh, i'm heading this uh, pgs team centrally coordinating the uh, all the customers inquiries and so you can reach all of us we are available anytime across india we have divided all of us to serve you better and on time uh, yeah prakash i think i have done it and then you can take it ahead so we have a big application engineering team prakash can carry on forward here yeah so uh, this is what uh, you can see uh, the previous slide i think uh, we have a big team with lot of you know, experts lot of competencies uh, expertise in different industries like you know automobile uh, pairing uh, steel uh, gear uh, wall then uh, you can aerospace then we have this vibration analyst and all and uh, most of the experts they have been trained know outside the country as well as no uh, in our r&d center so so just this is for no uh, for your information the, what kind of competencies do we have uh, how we are spread uh, and uh, we are available uh, for your service uh, anything related to the grinding it may be the product it may be the solution it may be the service it may be the training uh, as, as per your requirement so uh, so this is this is the uh, this it is from our side uh, i think uh, so thank you very much thanks thanks a lot for your you know, participation we will take the questions uh, you no know, uh, which are pending or which are we uh, we have to answer so maybe hari uh, you can know yeah. there was a question yeah, the going to the questions the chat box so that's one question mm -hmm. from mr chat and hingane saying how does spectrum bifurcate machine parts and their frequency Okay, so it's actually a good question. So your spectrum is basically a resultant of a process called the fast Fourier transform, where you are changing from a time frequency domain, sorry, uh, a frequency amplitude domain to a, a time frequency domain to a amplitude frequency domain. It is basically a mathematical process to convert and separate these signals. So maybe uh, if you want to have further detailing on it, we can connect separately to explain how this works. 
but it's basically a mathematical formula that converts and bifurcates the different frequency. Yeah, um, there is another question. Uh, I think uh, which one? So after we analysis and diagnosis, uh, how do we know that the machine is now eliminated vibration? So this is a question from Mr. Mm -hmm. Kishore Asha. So again, yeah. a good question. So that's why I said in during the case study saying when he proposed certain maintenance activities, right? So we'll be there to ensure that once it is done, we'll again come and uh, check your vibration levels and see whether the impact is impacted in reducing your vibration levels. In a way, it can, it can give you the assurance that yes, your vibration levels have come down because of the maintenance activity you have made. So this is how we do actually, it is like, you no know, uh, condition monitoring, maybe uh, depends on the applications or, or the kind of quality uh, you want to build, you no know, uh, inside your product. So generally, uh, there are different frequencies. For example, somebody wants to check bi-monthly, somebody wants to check once in quarter, somebody is okay once in six months to check you know, whether the, my machines are okay, the bearing conditions are okay, spindles are okay, my machine overall is good. You no, know? uh, So uh, I think this is what we generate the data for history of that machine. But to start with the basic benchmarking and uh, we can just you know, build the data uh, quarter on quarter or month on month and which will be very very helpful for you uh, to take any decision and uh, this is how it may be the AMC kind of thing or it may be as I said it depends as per your no requirement it's not something there is a standard but if the product is high precision product where you need to have no for example expecting very uh, stringent tolerances in terms of uh, roundness uh, ovality uh, roughness maybe burn free, all those things, then I think uh, it is better to have a, a checks, maybe bi-monthly or once in quarter. If it is a semi-finish or rough kind of applications, still the machine condition monitoring is required, but your frequency can be once in a quarter or once in a six months, something like that. Yeah. Yes, I think that's a good question. question. Jairaman saying, how should we know that the resonance of the part and it is correlation with vibration? It's a very interesting question. Uh, so resonance will occur when there is a vibrating frequency which is very closer to your natural frequency of any component. So with our service, I mean, with our service providing and the knowledge we have, we'll be able to track the natural frequency of each and every machine component, and we can track the vibration, I mean, a vibration generating body's frequency, and we can tell you what is the safer limit uh, to avoid the resonance. So we can give, provide you the uh, service also. Anyway, it is a part of the package which we offer. So we'll be able to detect the resonance condition if there is anything available. Yeah. So there is one more question. Uh, the vibration range can be a size of the component. What is allowable range? Okay. So allowable range. Okay. As I was explaining through the presentation, the ISO 10816-3 is giving you a certain uh, threshold limits and alert limits for different machine categories, but in our experience, we also have certain uh, levels which we fix based on a machine category, being it a precision grinding machine or a, a semi finished grinding machine or a rough grinding machine. And your trending of data, saying uh, when you start measuring and you trend it every 15 every 15 days or every one month or every two months once, you will be able, once you have enough data to trend the vibration signal, you will be able to predict, saying when it will go, is going to fail, above, going above the ISO limits or your failure limits. There's not experience. Yeah, I think that's one question uh, from the audience saying, what is the, there are two different terms, uh, displacement velocity and acceleration and how, what to use when. So basically, uh, all the three are is going to measure the severity on the same vibrating uh, body, okay? So when do you use what? It's up to the, I mean, it is based on the frequency of the rotating member and the severity of the, issue okay so it is that is why the category to analyze the the course itself is based upon what parameters to use what and how do you record it so with the help of the theoretical knowledge on what to use where we'll be able to choose appropriate parameter based on the fall condition which we see Uh, any any questions any queries if anybody has uh, now they can ask on maybe chat box or maybe uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask we have one two minutes left yeah hari hari one more question from Hello. my side yeah 
Can I ask you a question? My name is Alok Chaudhary. Yeah, yeah, can I ask you? Yeah, do you sell this simulation software to the other companies, or this is for your specialized use only? Uh, no, sir. This is actually developed by Norton. Uh, the software, mm -hmm. so we don't sell software. Uh, we have a, a software come uh, uh, IoT sensors together customized that is we call as a foresight so in that maybe uh, you will get both the things uh, but not uh, as a single uh, software like we have your fire vibration but you can have okay. a foresight where machine we can have for entire machine actually your system can be used for other machines also or it is specialized for grinding machine only so it can be used uh, it can be used, but be used. we are uh, actually majorly focusing on uh, grinding because where our expertise comes. But if there is some chronical issue and if the customer is really looking for some solution, I think uh, we can help you out. Good. So, uh, I had one like question, please. Hmm. Uh, FI system is a very good system, which uh, I could see from your demonstration. Uh, in fact, I'm working as a technical consultant. So I had a, one of the client. Uh, where, mm -hmm. Can you uh, demonstrate this uh, FI system for one of the machine? Because they have got about uh, 20 mm -hmm. machines or odd machines. So if you can uh, demonstrate this to their one machine and then mm -hmm. uh, optimize their machine, I think uh, then we can uh, go for the other machine. Is it possible to uh, demonstrate on one of the machine? Yeah, it is possible, sir. Uh, we uh, we did that, uh, and uh, it is like as you said, no, you, you do for one machine, you will have 20 machines. So already we have some AMC with you no know, almost 70, 80, or 30 machines on the one shop floor, where they would like to have a benchmark of their machines, so like a, checking the condition, like you are with the the way we do a health checkup, no, yeah. every year. Yeah. <laughs> so so we also have uh, these services where you will just take the cycle of the product how it is behaving and all uh, at that condition and just we keep a record of that you know machine uh, year on year or maybe quarterly basis so uh, we can do that sir i think that is not a problem. yeah yeah uh, prakash can... uh, uh, is a very good uh, knowledgeable uh, informative webinar and thanks to you and your team and all the best for that thank you very much. Thank you. Actually, uh, Thomas here from uh, Triven Engineering, Mysore. Yes, sir. Are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. See, we have uh, two uh, uh, NC machine which was recently converted, uh, uh, out of which one was recently converted to CNC. You were uh, telling us that uh, you can offer this AMC service also. Uh, yeah. uh, will you be able to take AMC if required? We have only two machines. Other two machines are CNC machine wherein we have uh, online uh, monitoring yeah. for this vibration. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. We can do that. Already we have some of the customers where no, uh, we have AMC for only their bottleneck machine. For example, he has a 10 machines and but two machines are bottleneck machine. So, okay. so we have AMC with them, maybe bi-monthly, our engineer will go and take the readings and he will take you know, submit the report, how it is and all. So we, we can do that, sir. That is not a problem. Even if it is a one machine, uh, we can do that. Uh, provided there, uh, we have to decide in terms of uh, the cost part and all. So anyway, we'll discuss, uh, you know, separate that's why i'm not there are a lot of questions people are asking for the cost but i think it is very difficult to know uh, generalize it because you know it is a highly technical services uh, we need okay. to you know see what kind of machine application product uh, okay uh, so all those things and then uh, what kind of you know, tools will be required whether it is only okay with vibrations or we have we have something else and all so okay. it will be better to submit if you are you know uh, whatever uh, you are interested into definitely uh, we will come back to you or we we'll connect separately and we'll explain what it is and how it is thank you thank you mr prakash thank you yes anybody has any question uh, maybe we can take it otherwise uh, we can call for the session
Hello, sir. I am Shrikant from uh, India. We are the manufacturer of uh, CNC fire axis uh, tool and cutter grinder. Okay. We explained about the vibration and the grading of the vibration, all those things. Actually, uh, mm -hmm. you are not talking about the balancing grade. Uh, is there any mm. queries about that? Hari. Uh, you can also touch up on that uh, balancing grade grade. Say uh, yeah, balancing we, grade G. We have yes, 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 G. Yeah, yeah. We we have that. We know that uh, it depends what kind of application. Also, but I think we we have that too. And even we we do a uh, training for that also. So, but if you would like to have a specific some you know, thing, I think you can share with us. Uh, definitely, we will contact uh, you and we will explain what it is and how it is. So is it is it the balancing of your rotor which you're talking about yeah actually uh, we manufacture a machine so in the machine spindle will be there normally okay. we certify our machine with the balancing grade and overall vibration also okay uh, in fine. that scenario i am telling if you are going for a uh, periodic uh, vibration analysis and uh, grading that vibration all those things hmm. so we as a manufacturer we uh, initially prepare a one data sheet with the signature of the bearing balancing grade overall the thing okay and also yeah. give the grade of that spindle so yeah. uh, the, the trend in the upcoming manufacturing sectors so, so the same thing will be there uh, as a uh, uh, service part of you you are giving a service of uh, vibration services so you can also have yes. that uh, as a uh, continuation with the manufacturer that will be uh, good for the uh, consumers. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a very good idea, sir. Thanks for no, uh, bringing this into this forum. Uh, actually, uh, we are in a discussion with some of the OEMs where they would like to have you no, know, like you no know, machine has to be certified from uh, analyst that this machine has uh, this kind of you no know, vibration range, and your next due on so on so that so this machine is. So sometimes, you no, know, the manufacturer sends machine to the customer, and uh, it is very difficult to submit the vibrations. There will be you will have a machine in disassembled condition, and you will assemble it again. And whatever the vibrations are showing at your shop floor, it may not be at their shop floor. So uh, actually, uh, I think uh, this is a good idea. If we are you are interested, I think we can discuss on this proposal, and probably uh, we can certify that machine. That machine has you no. Know, this level of vibrations and maybe we can also certify the customer level means we can have that kind of mutual understanding or MOU. So we are open for that, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, still I think there are questions maybe more about the cost. So uh, I will prefer more. Please uh, contact us because. Uh, Cost means what kind of services you would like to avail. Means it is a FIS, it is a VIS, it is a training, it is a foresight, it is a IoT. So you would have seen a lot of things are there, uh, but we can have a custom made thing and uh, accordingly the cost will be there. So please uh, contact with us or maybe you can just uh, share your mail ID. Uh, definitely uh, our team will come back to you and we will be happy to serve you or we will uh, work with you. Okay, anything else? Uh, then otherwise, I think uh, it is for twenty. Days. We are on time for one and a half hour session. Uh, so I would like to thank you on behalf of Saint Gobain Average Use uh, or maybe Grandival Norton Limited, you no, know, for your time uh, for your active participation. I will say because there are a lot of questions uh, and the interest by all of you, and you were there till the end of session. And I hope uh, this session uh, would have found you the interesting. And uh, if still we could not able to resolve some of the questions, uh, please write to us. We will come back to you and we will ensure that your all queries have been resolved. Uh, and definitely uh, we will see you, see you soon. And we will be serving you in the future also. So thanks a lot and uh, take care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, everyone. You all for the participants. This is, this is Nagesh from TNT Times. Uh, thank you all, the Norton team, and thank you all participants. Let's meet for another session uh, next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks.
Thanks, Nagesh. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, Nagesh. Thank you, Pranjan. Thanks. Thank you. And bye bye. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye, sir. Take care, all. Bye. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm either mute. No, 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 no,